Hello everyone. Uh, this podcast is going to be about the different types of fingerprint patterns that you will see uh, in people's fingerprints. Uh, we're going to start off with a little bit of history. Uh, back in ye olde times, uh, they used to identify people, particularly criminals, uh, using something called the Bertillon method. Uh, this was developed by a Frenchman named Alphonse Bertillon. Um, and what you would do is you would measure different parts of the body. Okay, so for example, you would measure you know, the width of somebody's head, or the length of their forearm, or the length of their foot, or the, you know, the length of their forehead. Uh, so you'd have all of these measurements that you would keep on file. Uh, and that's how you would identify a person, by seeing uh, if they matched all of these measurements. Um, so this was the first uh, identification system. Uh, it was called the Bertillon method. So this worked, you know, pretty well for a while uh, for the criminals, but then uh, at the Leavenworth Federal Penitentiary, uh, an inmate was admitted by the name of Will West. Right? And uh, the you know, officer who was admitting him into the prison was like, dude, you know, I've seen you here before. And Will West was like, you know, I've never been to this prison. Uh, so he went back into the records. Uh, he pulled out the protein measurements and he found out that Will West uh, had almost the same exact measurements uh, as this other guy. Uh, and they looked similar too. And guess what? The other uh, guy's name was William West. Um, now it gets even stranger, right? William West had actually been admitted to the prison two years before. They did not know each other. So this guy had like a doppelganger with the same name and the admitting officer was like, I don't know what to do. We have these two prisoners. They have the same measurements. They have the same name. Um, so I don't know how to tell these two guys apart. So he called up Scotland Yard uh, over in England. He had some connections. And Scotland Yard had you know, said that we you know, were using this method uh, of people's fingerprints to tell them apart. Uh, it's been successful for us. So this uh, really was the first case that prompted uh, the use of fingerprints in the United States. Right, now there's some general characteristics of fingerprints. Some of these are uh, for your information. Uh, but the first one, fingerprint par uh, patterns are going to be class uh, characteristics. Right? It's not until you get into the fine detail that it's going to become individualized. All right, the fingerprint pattern is going to remain the same for your entire lifetime. Uh, however, you can alter uh, or scar it. Okay, so for example, we have a scar on this fingerprint here. Um, and some criminals in the past have tried to burn their fingerprints or scar them in an attempt uh, to make them non-usable in an investigation. Um, but, you know, so far that hasn't really worked out too well. Uh, even with partial prints, uh, they have been able to get a match. I think this uh, next point is really cool. Your fingerprint patterns uh, are determined by your genes, so there's a genetic component, but also by the interaction in the womb. Okay, so you touch uh, the wall of the womb, and also depending on what the amniotic fluid that you're in is like, uh, can actually determine how the ridges of your fingerprint uh, develop, which I think is really neat. Uh, and this is more FYI, uh, but I thought this was cool too, that fingerprints actually evolved to allow you to grasp things better. Uh, and this is doubly so when you get wet. So if you've ever gotten the pruny fingers, uh, you know, like this picture here, right, scientists actually think that these ridges, uh, where the reason that you get pruny fingers is it increases the surface area and helps you to grip onto things better. So, yeah, pretty cool. 
All right, now fingerprints are going to be grouped into three different classes. They're going to be arches, loops, and whirls. Right. The first type, the arches, uh, are the simplest type of the fingerprint. They are the least common in the population. Um, now these are fingerprints that enter on one side and leave on the other. Okay, so if we take a look at this plain arch here, all right, we have ridges that are coming in on one side okay, and going out on the other. So they form like a little mountain. You can also have a tented arch, which has a spike right in the middle of it. All right, so that's how you're going to tell the two apart. Right? If it generally looks like a mountain peak, it's going to be an arch. If it is a pointy mountain, it is a tented arch. If it's like a smooth rolling hill, it is a plain arch. All right, the next type are loops. Loops are going to have something called a delta. They need at least one of them. And what a delta is, is a triangle uh, formed in the fingerprint pattern. So this is what a delta looks like in the fingerprints. Uh, and this is what it would look like over here. All right, and they also need to have a ridge that enters and leaves on the same side. So they form a loop. Uh, so if you take a look at this one here, okay, we have a ridge that's starting here, and we're going to follow it, and it's going to leave on the same side. Okay, um, now these are named uh, depending on if they're pointing to the radius or ulna bones in your hand. Um, for this particular print here, which is going uh, with this direction, this is called an ulnar loop on the right hand and a radial loop on the left hand. However, if it's pointing to the right, okay, it is called a radial loop on the right hand and ulnar loop on the left. So you want to uh, make sure that you pay attention to the difference between those two and what hand uh, you are looking at. Sometimes you won't know, uh, so you know, uh, you can put a right slant or a left slant in that case, but you want to try to be specific. And the last type of fingerprint is the whirl. Uh, whirls have at least uh, one ridge uh, that tends to make a complete circle. Uh, now they also have two deltas, so two of those uh, triangles. So if we take a look at our whirls here, okay, we've got a delta here and a delta here. Right, for the central pocket whirl, we've got a delta here, okay, and we've got a delta going on there. All right, the double loop whirl, two deltas, two triangles. All right, this accidental whirl actually has um, three going on. Um, now, to tell the difference between the different types of loops, whirls look like concentric circles. The central pocket loop kind of looks like a peacock feather. Sometimes it's called a peacock fingerprint. Uh, and this looks like a little right, tiny whirl okay, inside of a loop, okay, which is why it's called the central pocket loop. Um, so it looks like a peacock feather. To tell uh, if it's a double loop whirl, it's two loops that have swirled around each other. Um, so I like to look for an S pattern here. And then for an accidental loop, uh, a good giveaway for that is if it has these three deltas or if you can't really tell what the fingerprint is. It looks like a whole bunch of patterns mixed together. Right, so let's uh, see if you have this down. Uh, so what type of fingerprint pattern do you think this is?